All right, so I haven't seen you guys for a few days. Um, been very competitive out there. Been really excited about the energy and focus. Um, for those of you kind of following the schedule, we've gone with a little bit different schedule than traditional. So uh, we do practice a little bit less this way and do a lot more kind of walkthroughs and classrooms and stuff to um, take care of their bodies a little more. So that's why you don't see quite as much time on the field and number of practices. But I thought guys have been really competitive out there. We got, as you know, a ton of new guys. That's exciting to see. And, but at the same time, that excitement comes with a lot of work to get them all pieced together. Um, the end of that question is not good for college athletes. Um, I think it's really sad for fans, you know, to want to travel to games. And, you know, we're just talking about football here, but let's talk about all the sports that now got to fly around the country. They played weekdays. They get back at four in the morning. They got to go to school. Um, parents aren't going to be able to see near as many games, families. So <clears throat> you guys know I just call it what it is. It's obviously about money. So anybody that says these decisions, well, they weren't about money or money was just a small factor. No, I mean, you don't do that to all your student athletes. That's not in the betterment of the student athlete at all. So, but it is what it is it's about money. And so just like we do call it what it is. So again, like I hope nobody gets on these 17, 18 year olds that make money for, or make decisions based off NIL money when all these universities are doing it. And it's just the tradition part. You know, you're talking about 100 years of tradition just washed up for some more money. Kind of back to the practice field. I, I, you talked about excitement and just worried about this defense and Golding and all the new pieces and everything just trying to mesh after a week of practice film and just kind of looking how are you seeing that, that, that defense progress with, with all these new faces? Uh, really well. Again, you know, only a few practices in, but um, I think Pete's doing great. And a lot of new pieces on the players and staff, and they've spent a ton of time preparing for this, um, working really hard. So I'm really excited about that. And kind of going off that, especially defensively, you talk about energy and competitiveness. It seems like Kenoto Hudson out there is just kind of getting it from the very jump. I'm just when you brought him on the staff, just what do you feel like he really brought to the table and what do you feel like he kind of brings to the secondary? Yeah, we've been around Key a long time, uh, ever since he worked for us at USC and then um, FAU and, and now here. And he's always done a great job in recruiting, done a great job with player development and phenomenal energy. So it's great to add him. And last week when you were talking about the quarterbacks, you were talking about how there's no preseason games to have any further evaluation and, you know, try not to risk you know, picking the wrong guy, you know, before or sort of during the season. That being said, in your ideal world, would you, would you prefer to that college football have preseason games in that sense? Or I've really not thought about that just because it's never really come up. You know, the spring things come up where they've talked about maybe you played one spring game or something, but I've not been part of discussions about that, so I haven't given much thought to that. And um, so, I mean, just in these few seconds of thinking of it, um, I could see where there'd be a use of that, but um, I'm sure that probably creates other problems too. How have you seen Austin kind of handle this big transition of, you know, now should be a junior, but he's now a freshman in college and just adapting and he's having a uh, short number of practices y'all had so far? He's done a good job, really mature for his age and, um, you know, extremely mature on and off the field. And so um, he's progressed really well. We can see just from the time we've been out there that obviously Aiden Williams is, is really gifted. Um, obviously, there's a bunch of other stuff that goes into being a good receiver at this level. I'm curious where he's at kind of mentally and maybe in, in some of the things that are more in the margins? 
Yeah, I'd kind of rather you guys just report about how great he is, you know, so I can keep him humble and keep him working. Um, but you guys see what I see. So um, still got a lot of work to do, but you can report what you see there. You're talking. I'm not going to rat poison my own freshman. There you go. Um, at, at SEC Media Day, you were talking about, you know, the stuff that Quinshawn needs to work on with terms like footwork. And, and we talked to Quinshawn about it. He was talking about trying to be an all-around back um, this year. When talk, when talking about that, is that more just his ability as a receiver or just trying to work him into, you know, way into the system where he can be used more as a receiver if needed? Yeah, I think in year two with players, you know, you take a next step. And everybody says that, you know, okay, the player's got to get better at these little things. But you can also take the next step in – doing more things and whether that's a quarterback or a running back, you know, and you can use a guy more in the passing game, things that in my opinion, when you first get him, you don't want to do all that because then you never really get good at just being the normal running back. So um, we are looking at some things with him and he's uniquely gifted for a bigger, you know, stocky guy that he can play in the passing game, which a lot of times not the case. You guys obviously brought in Caden Prescorn uh, this offseason. Um, how do you feel he and Michael Trigg fit together? And I guess what are your expectations for Michael Trigg? Um, Prescorn has fit in really well. Um, players put him on the leadership committee already after not being here very long, which says a lot. Um, so he's extremely mature. And so we're, we're excited about him. Um, Trigg has done some good things. Um, we're still you know, pushing him forward, and so still early in camp. When when Matt was here, you guys had a really good relationship, and that probably played a role in that good of a season that second year with him. Is your relationship any with Jackson Dart anything comparable to that? I think that's more a question for the player, you know. Um, but <clears throat> I like Jackson a lot. I think that Jackson's matured a lot developed a lot, uh, his game's a lot better in a year. And again, he's, he, he's mature, but he was still young. You know, he was second year of college and first year here. So um, I like Jackson a lot. And um, he has really grown into a leader of this team. You know, um, you know, they vote that leadership group and he was up there as high as anybody, you know, in their opinion. So. Um, I think that says a lot because he's not real vocal. That way he's just won him over by how he invests in them. All right. Thanks. All right.